In today's video, we're doing a few more experiments with the ink removed from ballpoint pens. A while back, we took 1,000 ballpoint pens and removed all of the ink from them and collected it. And we still have probably 800 pens worth of that ink. Maybe a little less, but we've got quite a bit. This is just a pool of pen ink. And since we did that, we asked what we could do with it, and we had several responses. So today, we've got five comment requests, and we're gonna try them out and see what happens with our pen ink. I still think my idea was the best. Your idea was to paint your nails with it. I'm just painting my nails. With what? Pen ink. She's thrilled I'm not going to paint my nails <laughs> with pen ink, but here's hoping that works out for you. It, I, I guess it's a really cool metallic black coppery color. Here's the basic idea. We've got five suggestions of things to try with ballpoint pen ink. We're gonna go through them one by one and see what the results are. Let's go through our comments one at a time. Our first comment comes from Charlene McClintock who asks us to do a test to see if pen ink is magnetic. Callie has a very powerful magnet in her hands. Let's show the power of that magnet off a little bit for a second. <laughs> I'm pretty sure this magnet has a 100 pound pull strength, which means if it's on a flat piece of metal that it's attracted to, it takes 100 pounds pulling it straight away from it. Obviously the way to remove it without that much force is to use leverage, twist at an angle, pull it off. So, very powerful magnet. Let's see if it wants to do anything at all to our ink. It's not sticking to my nails. The nails, no effect. That is a very, very thin layer of the ink. That is true. This is probably like less than a drop of ink, guys. This stuff has great coating power. This, however, is about a <laughs> cup of ink. <laughs> So let's see if we get any result. I'm gonna start by putting it on the side of the glass so it doesn't just stick to our magnet if it's magnetic. Anything? Can you feel it pull at all? Nope. nope. Feel no pull. I see no ripples in the ink. Without the glass, in case the glass is what's causing the lack of magnetism. Well, whatever is in this ink that's making it metallic, it's apparently not magnetic. It does look metallic, and maybe does. there actually is real metal in the ink. I don't know the full chemical composition of the ink. But not all metals are magnetic. The three elemental metals that are attracted to magnets are iron, nickel, and cobalt, and some of their alloys. Steel, for example, is an alloy of iron and carbon, and sometimes some other things. That usually is attracted to magnets. Thank you for your suggestion. It would have been really cool if it were, because that would have been like a really cheap source of ferrofluid. No magnetism here. All right, so for our next comment, we've got one from Mama's Boy 99 How would electricity work in the pen ink? So you can see when I touch the two metal pieces together, it's a very bright little light that we've got there. Put something in the way of that, like my tongue. Lights up a tiny bit. Not as much, not as much. So there's something in the way. All right, so first, uh, as a comparison control test, just regular water. So here's how bright it is without anything. And then in the water, very light glow. Now pure water, distilled water, probably would give us no result, but this is tap water and it's got minerals in it, imperfections. But now we're adding salt, which hopefully will make it even better. Oh, that's oh, quite a bit yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, okay. Still not as bright as the wires touching, however. Let's try the ink. And into the ink. Mm. Ooh, there actually is a tiny, tiny little what? bit of purple. Is that oh, you're very, very... Are you sure it's not a reflection? Yeah. So you can see that the wires are about two inches apart in the ink. And that's giving us an extremely low, but not nothing, glow on our LED. It's much worse than salt water, and it's actually worse than non-salt water. So Mama's Boy 99, we do have conductivity through the ink, but so little that it barely counts. Our next comment request comes from Icy Paw, who says, try putting dry ice into pen ink. I'm just gonna dip it and see what happens. <laughs> that did not stick. It's sticking to the pliers. Yeah, though. the pliers are getting stuck to it. But look at that, it's actually, oh, it's freezing ink in streams. Here, try and, try and let's see if we can like, 
capture. Pliers it together. Oh, that's weird. It's so odd. Because it's still a liquid, guys. We're just freezing it. The bottom, where it's actually in contact, I think is yeah. started to freeze. Oh no. Yeah, I'll see you like that. Sucked my glove immediately. Yeah. Let's see if I can flip it over. No, it stuck my hand. Ah, oh no. This is weird because it's like partly frozen, so it's like gummy. This part's starting to dull. It's actually. Oh, it is. Look at that. You're actually it's you've frozen, frozen, all frozen the, way the ink. All right, I'm going to try and pull it off of that. Oh my goodness. Look at that. It's just a chunk. Okay, I'm going to destroy my gloves, but that's fun. Clay is a really good description, but it's- Except it's, it's melting into sticky. If you were to mix clay and slime, but it's, um, it has this give of like a gummy candy almost, except it's, it is, it is warming up rapidly and quickly just destroying my gloves. Yeah, this elastic texture is not something that I was expecting, but my goodness, it's fun. Aha! I win. You get it out? I did. Good. Well, I think we should progress to mixing even more dry ice in. That was the comment, is try putting dry ice into the pen ink. We've done everything but that, so. So here goes. Yeah. Dry ice. <gasps> yes. That's kind of what I was hoping it would do. So I got some pretty good shots blowing bubbles into the ink last time, but now, as it seals up over the dry ice, it just makes its own bubbles as the dry ice tries to expand. So while Nate plays with that, we've got another comment and request. I apologize if I butcher this name. I believe it is Ha Sueng Jung. Mix it with soap and then blow ink bubbles. <laughs> it's so cold now from the dry ice that we still got this pulled taffy consistency. Yeah, you can already see that there's like this cool gold sheen happening. Okay. So if anybody ever wants to make their own homemade galaxies, ink and dish soap. We are going to try and blow ink bubbles, but this may be a little too viscous. This is just ink and soap, so we've added a little bit of water to this one. Let's see what we can do. Well, that's an ink bubble. It's pretty though. So, ink and soap together, not really making bubbles, but his ink, soap, and water is. With that weird mixture that Nate's got, it really just looks like he's blowing blood bubbles. That's freaking cool. Well, now I'm gonna have to start popping bubbles because I don't want them to expand up out of the Here, top. wait, hang on. This was an awesome idea. It didn't go quite the way we planned, but it was still cool. Our last request is from Olivers758 who asks if we can dehydrate the pen ink. We've got two things we're gonna try. One, we're gonna throw some ink in our Dehydrotron, little dehydrator machine we've used before. And the other is the reason that this has been on the counter the whole time is this is our freeze dryer. We're gonna see what happens if we freeze dry ink. We don't know how this is gonna go. We don't know how far this is gonna expand. So we're just gonna do a small amount in a very large jar and hope it contains it. You may remember when we first vacuumed some ink, it bubbled up a lot and the clear sides of the cup that it was in just turned completely black immediately and then you couldn't really see what was happening inside anymore. There's a decent chance the same thing is gonna happen here. We've seen some liquids bubble up a lot. Will ink do the same thing? We're not sure. We've seen how rigid it gets when it gets cold and the freeze dryer does get very cold. It might be enough to stop it from moving at all. We can see, we can look at it after 24 and see if we think it's doing well. Side benefit, we're testing out what happens if you put a GoPro in a freeze dryer. <laughs> it may not survive. And I know the burning question you all had, did my nails survive this experiment? Yes, they did. Our ink has been run through the freeze dryer and the dehydrator for about a day and a half now. Uh, coming up on two days at this point, actually, and we think that at least one of them is finished. It's gonna be very cold. First off, did our GoPro survive? Sorry, did I mean, GoPro. The, the battery is almost certainly dead at this point. It's a very cold GoPro. I just wonder if we can 
You can yeah. turn it on again. I think that'll be a fun experiment. We'll see if this lived. Okay, this is my new favorite thing ever. Wow. So, obviously this part is all very, very dry. This is very cold to hold. You can see as it's frosting up. Still getting ink marks. Um, this might be the prettiest stained glass thing ever. It's kind of going gummy. Interesting. Okay, around the edges, it's still a, a little squishy. Got some fairly warm water, not too hot. We don't want to risk breaking the cup or anything like that. This is from our internal oh. GoPro, which apparently did survive its trip through the vacuum chamber. Whoop! And there goes the ink. That's amazing. And it explodes. Come on. Which is funny, because like it doesn't look like there's any air bubbles in the ink. Like no, it's just no, sitting there for a while, but yeah. apparently there's enough that degasses in low pressure that it just creates all of those bubbles. Like obviously a ton of bubbles. That was insane. Oh, and you can see what it's done to our perfectly clear glass. Wow. At this point, the glass is warmed back up. It's not frozen there. This is the same powdery dry substance here. However, down at the bottom, now that you've warmed it back up. Yeah, it was frozen in there, and we saw with the dry ice how it gets really thick when it freezes. Uh, but now this is warmed back up. All right, so we've exhausted just about everything that we can do with the freeze-dried ink. Now we want to see what happened to our dehydrated ink. Well, that's cool. You can see all of the places where the ink hasn't dried yet of my handprint. What's in here? Um, okay. Seems fairly liquid. This is our comment request asking if we could dehydrate the ink. It has very thoroughly become inundated with the ink. That's now the rest of our ink yes. and the freeze dried. Yeah, ink this mix. is the rest of our ink and everything was freeze dried. So you can still see like the viscosity here. But now, if I do the same thing to what we put in the dehydrator, it's, uh, it's a little gummier. It does look like it's sticking a little bit more. But that's about it. It's still, it's still ink. In our first video where we took the ink out of a thousand pens, there were dozens and possibly hundreds of comments saying that instead of taking the ink out of the thousand pens, we should have just bought the ink online. And you can buy ink online, but it's not this kind of ink. Pen ink that you buy online is much, much thinner. It's designed for like a quill pen or a fountain pen that you dip into the ink or you refill a well and then you try and draw with it that. It's not the same thing. This would not work in a fountain pen. This stuff is as thick as corn syrup and this is not the consistency that you normally have in a bottle of ink. So while it would have been easier to buy a bottle of ink, it's just completely different. We wouldn't have learned what's inside ballpoint pens. We wouldn't really know anything about that ink because it's just too different. Another thing to mention is that when it comes to India ink, the reason people like it is the quality of the honestly the blackness of the color it's very very dark and there's no shine to it ballpoint pen ink is usually known for having the sort of metallic quality you're not going to get that with india ink or true india ink. guys that's it for today but you know the fun doesn't end we've always got more for you to see that box up at the top will take you to our last video and you should go check that out the other box is going to show you what youtube thinks you should be watching next and if you hit this bomb here in the middle you'll be subscribed to the channel so you never miss out on a video don't forget to ring that bell and we'll see you in the next one talk to you then